My name is Paul Seberger, and I teach math at Monroe Community College in Rochester, New York. And I've been using LibreText for quite a while, 2018 or so. And I've been also working at creating visualizations in um, various ways. I've got a visualization tool called Calpplot 3D that allows the user to uh, explore uh, three-dimensional graphs of functions. Uh, the focus of the project was on multivariable calculus, but it has applications in many other areas, including chemistry and physics, and of course, many areas of mathematics. So I'm going to show you how to insert a dynamic rotatable figure from Calpplot 3D uh, in a LibreText page. And I'm also going to show you how to insert a GeoGebra exploration in a LibreText page. So since I'm in the math library, some of what I'm going to show focuses on what's there, but uh, you can insert things from the math library in other libraries. And there's a way to do that that I've put into a tutorial that I've created. Uh, but let me show you some of what can be done and then point you to the tutorials. And then I'll begin to show what I can show in the time I have. So let's see, sharing my screen. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to show you first something that's in my uh, calculus 2 book just to show you what calcplot 3 3d can do uh, this is a uh, volume revolution focused section there's also some volumes by slicing that i hope to eventually implement and have up here but don't yet have that so it's got a lot of static images in this text it's actually from openstax i've customized it and added these uh, three-dimensional visualizations to it so here's the first one i think there's four on this page so you can move the slider and see the volume of revolution be formed. So there's the whole thing. Uh, you could rotate it around, see what it looks like. Um, we can use washers, because that's what's used in calculus anyway, to try to approximate the volume and increase the number of washers. So you can see what that looks like. And so, so this is uh, just one example of what can be done with uh, this tool. I'll show you some others here too. Let me go to my Calc 3 book. This is my chapter, actually section on lines and planes in space. So one of the first images in the OpenStax book basically looked like this, but it was static and it's supposed to represent a three-dimensional line. And so I thought, boy, this would be a great one to make rotatable so we can actually see that this line is really uh, not just drawn across the front of this, but actually of this page, but actually is three dimensional. So we can rotate that figure around and see how it's the line is parallel to the vector. And I don't know if you know Calc 3, but at least you can appreciate the three dimensionality of it when you can rotate that around. So this is a, one way to insert a Calc Plot 3D image in a page, just with no controls, just rotatable ability to make it a dynamic uh, three dimensional image. Now on the same page, there are a couple more of these. Let me just show you one more of them down here. Oops, there was one. So this is a, a figure that just shows these two lines are uh, skew. They're not, they're not uh, parallel, but they're also not uh, crossing or inter intersecting. So it helps students to really see that when they can rotate that versus it just being on the page where it looks like they intersect if you just look at it on the page. So that is just another quick example of, of how that works. Now, um, let me show you a GeoGebra exploration, just so I've shown you both kinds here at the beginning. This is actually one I created, and it could be useful in physics as well as in um, differential equations where I use it. It's a spring motion demonstration. So is, it's this case, it's a force spring motion problem. And it's got a little crank up here that turns and shows the, the weight going on the spring up and down. and forming some beats here in the motion. So just to give you a sense for one such example from GeoGebra. Now you can find a lot of GeoGebra stuff out there. There are some on the math library, um, and uh, but there's many more out there that you can find and insert using the techniques I'm going to show you here. So let's see, the next page I have here is actually just my LibreText training tutorials that I've created for my own uh, workshops and presentations. This is on my own campus hub in the math library. Um, but I've placed some of these in the um, construction guide. So links, there are linked versions of these. This is where I work on them. But if you go to developers on the tab when you're signed in and go to the construction guide, I'll show you where you can find these. So you'd go down 
uh, looking at the different topics to interactive elements. And in interactive elements, it should be here. Let's see if we go down near the bottom. You've got, um, there we go, creating dynamic figures with Calcplot 3D, adding GeoGebra explorations to LibreText pages. And another one I added here, I'm not going to talk about today, but is adding web work problems to LibreText. So looking at these, let me just go to one of them that's already open here. So this is the tutorial that I created for adding dynamic figures from Calcplot 3D. So it talks a little bit about it, gives the, actually it's the example we looked at earlier, but in the context of this page, gives uh, another example from 6.2 that I'd shown earlier. This is one that has a slider on it, shows motion, you can animate the motion. Uh, so again, showing how we can have controls in some of these, uh, not just three-dimensional plots. Let me show one more down below here on this page, skipping past some of the instructions that are there. Um, there's a two-dimensional one down here. So this is a, a two-dimensional graph that's created with Calcplot 3D, allows you to uh, change the constants on a quadratic or a parabola, so a quadratic a function. So you can change the coefficient A, you can change the coefficient B and see what happens. We can even animate it using the animation button. Of course, this shifts it up and down. So just an idea of how you could use this in a two-dimensional setting, perhaps in an algebra class, not necessarily in multivariable calculus only. Uh, so this page goes through a lot of different things that can be done here. I'm not going to have time to do it all, but let me just show you how to get started. So let's see. Um, going to, well, the math page, which is where I have put a lot of these, but there are some in the chemistry and physics uh, libraries as well. But if we are logged in, you can go to the learning objects option. Might be named something slightly different in some of the other libraries, but in there, you can see both the Calcplot 3D interactive figures and the GeoGebra simulations pages. And these just told what's been added in already. Um, in this case, the Geo or the Calcplot 3D figures we'll look at first. Um, there's some for the OpenStax calculus book specifically. There's a figure, at least one in here for Guichard calculus. And then some others that I've created for my own um, sections I've created and put in my custom books uh, here. And this was fun for Apex, just another calculus book. So this is where we can sort of peruse what's already there, at least in the math library, and get a sense for how this would work. And it also gives you a way to get one that you could then edit uh, the, the, the page and the code to add your own into your, your page. So here are just images of what they look like. Uh, let's see, this was, where is the one we, you know, we looked at this one right here, figure 1251, and then we looked at this one here on the page. Uh, so these would be two that we could think about. Now, what I'm gonna show you how to do here is um, just to add a new page. So you'd be in your sandbox or in your uh, book. What I would recommend is creating a standalone page in your, your campus. Um, bookshelf once you have that and placing any of these in there that you create and that makes it easy then to insert them. Um, I guess really the first thing to do is show you how to insert one which is actually the step that you do in order to modify it. So let me add a new page here. So once you're in a location with a a book you can in a chapter you can add a page. Well put a title here so this would just be a uh, example, Calcplot 3D uh, figure, you know, I'll call it two here. And before I actually add it in there, I'm going to save. So the tags here save. It just makes sure that it's labeled correctly with information at the top of the page um, in the page settings. So it sets some of those up correctly so that their page is not lost later on and on, I can't find it very well. So that's a good thing to do first, I found. Then I'm going to edit the page. And at this point, we're going to do something that is one way to get these. Uh, you can also actually remix one of these into your uh, sandbox. That'd be another approach that you've learned about that you could use to get that figure into your sandbox. But here I'm going to go to elements on the page once I'm edited, editing it, go to content reuse. And um, I'm going to click the plus on the home so I can see all the options that are on the base level here. 
I actually want to go to learning objects like I showed you a minute ago. And then we can pick whether it's the Calc plot 3D interactive figure or the GeoGebra simulation. We do it the same way here. And we can then choose one of these to insert here. So let me just go ahead and pick one of these. Um, maybe just go with the interlocking circles. I'll just pick one there and we'll insert it. Okay, right now it's labeled as a content reuse item. You'll see that described, by the way, in the tutorial. Um, if you want to read through that more carefully and try those steps out. Uh, but once we save this, it should appear as that particular dynamic figure. So let's see here. It takes a second to show up. So this is it wasn't when we just you know, we looked at earlier, but it's just another one of them that's in there. Interlocking circles, okay, one inside the other. Okay, now if I want to create my own, which is part of what I want to show you here, we would want to not just edit this page, but actually uh, fork it. Now, this is something that happens when you use content reuse. Uh, it doesn't automatically recognize that this is transcluded, that it's linked. So you can either go to page settings and change that setting, transcluded, not set right now, and put yes. Or you could just go up to the options and choose forker. But once I do this, if I reload the page, it will show the little fork next to the title now. It's the same thing that would happen when you do some other things like this that, you know, copy the page without like reverting, I guess, was what came up earlier when Tom was talking about reverting a page back to the linked version, the transcluded version. You could change that setting transcluded here to come back with a fork. Anyway, I wanted to click here, but I could also have chosen options forker. So either way, we want to do that. And then it will say fork this page. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and do that. It'll do the work. OK, and now reloads the page. It'll still look like it's the same page, same image, but now I'll have the code for it. So if I edit the page, rather than seeing that content reuse, it shows where it came from, by the way. Um, that was page ID 7503. But we can see what it looks like in this view, but we want to really look at the HTML code. So looking at the HTML allows us to edit this and put our own new Calplot 3D uh, image into it. So you can see it here. It's a little bit um, hard to, to read, perhaps. So maybe I can make it a little bit larger. You don't have to read it anyways. It's just a bunch of code here. But it is uh, human readable if you know what some of these codes mean to adjust uh, the fine tune, I guess, the image that we want to uh, insert. But what we really need to do here is to just adjust the component or the part of this code it's highlighted now in blue by getting it from Calcplot 3D itself. Okay, now this is something that you may choose to do. You can just do what we did earlier with content reuse uh, to use what's already there. Uh, but this would be a way you could create your own images from Calcplot 3D uh, as, you as you wish, I guess. So let me go over here to Calcplot 3D and just show you quickly, don't have time to go into this very much, but uh, this is a tool that has all sorts of objects you can explore and see their interactions. But let me just grab what's here. Maybe I'll make it semi-transparent. Click this button and um, again, don't have time to do a whole lot more. That would probably be good enough. Maybe I'll put some contours on it. That might be something more I could quickly do. So we've got some cool contours on there like a topographical map embedded on the surface. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is come up to the menu, the little hamburger there. And on the file menu, the bottom option is encode view and view in URL. Now, what this will do is it will reload the page with the query string, which is going to come after the URL that's there right now, indicating exactly what's being graphed in the plot. And it's that query string that we need in order to adjust the figure to be what we want it to be. So, by the way, there is a help manual for Calcplot 3D. It's on the menu here. It's the second option. OK, it'll open in its own page. Uh, I actually have it open over here, but we'll not take time to look at it just yet. So what I'm going to do now is to come up to the URL, and I'm going to highlight the portion just after that question mark. So let me see if I can grab just the question mark on 
looks like I've got it. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here to the right on my Mac, it, tap, it happens instantly, <laughs> takes a little bit longer on here on my Windows machine. So I've got it all highlighted. I'm gonna hit Control C, and then I'm gonna go back to the page we were editing here a minute ago. Let's see. Um, there it is, the one just before it. Okay, so I've highlighted the, the code from that question mark on in blue. I'm gonna hit Control V, change length a little bit. Okay, it's the part that now is here. It's all in front of a particular URL that calls the CalcPlot 3D applet, knowing that it's a dynamic figure. So that's where this part right here is coming in. There's a slightly different one when the controls are on the figure, and I'll show you that if I have time, but um, we may need to just have leave that to be in the, um, in the tutorial. But let me go ahead and save this one now. And I also might take out these comment divs. They're actually showing that it's linked to an image that we really aren't linking to anymore anyway. I take that all out in the paragraph here. Let me go ahead, just back to visual first. With CalCLOT 3D, that gives us enough that it should bring it up. Yep, there it is. We could make fine tune adjustments to how big it is if we wanted to change the zoom level or some of the other things that are described in the, uh, the tutorial. But once we're ready, we can go ahead and save this. And should come back with the actual image that we could then refer to later uh, in our, if we put this in our campus hub somewhere, maybe in a folder linked with um, titled something like uh, interactive figures or uh, CalCLOT 3D figures. And then you could uh, use content reuse to pull this into your book uh, or I guess remixing would be another way to do it. But ideally this is gonna be not its own page, but inside your, your actual content with an example and discussing what it's supposed to mean. So that's how we could insert one into a book. Um, in terms of the time I've got left, let's see. Um, oh, something we could do if we wanna pull something from another discipline, there is a description on the short code that's used for a cross uh, library uh, transclusion. I can show you an example of one. Uh, this is a, an example of CalCLOT 3D being used on a problem for chemistry membrane. And you can sort of see it moving as the value of the parameter T is, is changed. So this is one that I imported into um, my folder here. Let's see where I put it. I think if I go here and just come back to what did I do? Add it to another figure. Yeah, I think I did. Um, we go back one level further. Oops. Sorry, jumping around there a little bit. Okay, so let's see, calc plot chemistry figure using calc plot 3D. So here is how I've pulled it in from the chemistry library. Um, it should be the same figure here, okay, rotatable, and you can animate it same as before. Okay, I'll pause that. And if I edit this page, it right now is a, it looks like a decky script, but really the easiest way to do this um, is to go to HTML and you can copy and paste this easily then. Um, you can adjust which library it's from. As I understand it, that would be the portion of the URL that's before libretext.org. That would be the library it's coming from. And then the page ID, um, I guess the easiest way is if you can edit in that uh, library, if, if you can go in and, and view it logged in, you should be able to see the page ID uh, like it is right here on this page. Okay, of course you'd be using it from the page you want to pull in from. And that is where that can be set. And then, you know, once you save it, you'll actually see the image from the other libraries collection of CalCLOT 3D uh, images. All right, let's see. I want to quickly show you an example of a GeoGebra process. It's very similar in a lot of ways, actually. Uh, in uh, the math library, underneath the same learning objects area, 
of the course is a list of GeoGebra simulations, okay, some of which I've created. If they don't have a, a title with a colon in front of them, either I've created them or I've, I've imported them. One or two of them might be imported uh, from other people. But um, we can pick one of these and import it somewhere into a page as a, as a demonstration. And to do that, we do something very similar to what we were doing before, um, except, let me see here. Um, trying to get back to a page that I want to be on. I guess this is it. So coming back to the example pages, let me just create a new page here. I have a place to put it. In a sense, this one. I think things were a little bit large. Let's see, this is going to be a GeoGebra exploration two. I think I already had one in there somewhere. Okay, and this doesn't have to be standalone, um, but if you do want to edit it and add your own, it might be helpful to do that. Uh, let me edit it again and pull one in. So I'm going to go to elements, custom reuse again. Go back to home, choose learning objects. This time we want GeoGebra simulations. And we'll pick any of them, although one of the first two works pretty well. So I'll pick this one and insert it. Again, it says content reuse right now. This is how we do it if we, we like what's there already. And we could have that in the middle of our uh, page, like, uh, you know, might put it maybe with a figure number, but. Um, could describe what we want the students to do with it and then have them uh, be able to manipulate it. Okay, we could change the size that it appears and so forth. We can adjust a lot of things on this example. Uh, but if we wanted to actually create our own or pull in one from the web somewhere, this example gives us a good one to fork and adjust. So since I didn't want to take time this time to go through resetting the transclude property to yes, I'm just going to use the forker. I'll click OK. And OK, again, again, what this does is it allows us to have the code already ready, ready for us to just adjust uh, on the page. And so I'm going to go ahead and just edit the page now. OK, this time I really do need to use the HTML. You won't see anything other than that. Um, we could get rid of the comments, just like we could before, because I'm not going to use the same one. And then what we need to do is adjust. And here again, I need to make it a little bit bigger, I think to make it easier to see, but we'll just need to adjust this material ID to the material ID, which is the last part of the URL, to any GeoGebra example that's out there on the web, okay? It'll come from the GeoGebra uh, server, but it will come into your page just like it's native, like it should be right there on that page. So let me show you what that might look like, um, let's see. I'm going to just use this tutorial for GeoGebra to find a link to where to go here. So if I go to GeoGebra.org, I guess I should have just probably pulled up one of mine. <laughs> Let's see. Um, so I'll just type spring demo in. That's not, that's not the one I was looking for. Um, but and let's just say we pick this one. Um, so it has, uh, uh, this is more than I'm looking for actually. It has ins instructions as well, but um, we could go ahead and try it. So the part of the URL that we need is the part after the M. So we'd go ahead and pick that component, copy that, and we'll go back to our page that we're editing. There we are. We're gonna paste in place of this material ID that was here. We'll be able to come back and adjust the width and the height or the scale. That'll make it smaller or larger. And a few of the other items that we might choose to adjust as well. So now I'll save it. And it should at least have the figure in it. We'll see what else it has. Looks like it doesn't have the description, just the figure itself. Okay, it's loading it up, but now it's there and you can adjust the, the sliders and see what it does. Okay, not one I've actually seen before. 
Okay, but that's the basic idea of how you'd bring one in. It's probably the most general application you'd make of inserting a GeoGebra exploration into your page. You can create your own GeoGebra explanation, explorations uh, if you know how or if you learn how. It's not too hard, uh, sort of fun. Uh, or you can use those that are out there, and there are a ton of them that you can make use of. Okay, that's probably more than all of my time, but uh, the tutorials that I've created that are there in the uh, construction guide should be helpful in learning a lot of other little tidbits, uh, but I would at least address most of those issues. And if you have further questions and want to explore it more, you can come to the breakout room with me.